quality of this video. I, as I always say, I hate filming the screen with a camera, but I want to show this running on a real machine, not in a virtual machine. Um, I have a flash drive here, my laptop's off, I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to choose my boot device on my particular computer. It's by hitting F12 at boot time, uh, but of course that varies from machine to machine. And I am going to choose to boot from USB. And what's on this flash drive is an installation of Grub with an ISO file. The ISO file is a live version of Debian. You see I have two options in here because I've configured Grub in two different ways. I'm going to hit E to go into edit mode for this first one here to show you. Um, so we're setting some parameters. Now you can see that I'm setting the ISO file. The ISO file in this particular case is in the root folder of my USB flash drive. Uh, but it could be placed in a subfolder if you want to put your ISOs in uh, to separate folders so they're not cluttering up the root directory if you're going to use the USB drive for other things. And then uh, the loop back loop and then the ISO. So we're setting the, a variable called ISO file and it's pointing to the ISO file and then we're using that that variable. So you could write right here, you could write Debian dot I, uh, slash Debian ISO, but we're creating a variable because we're using that in two different places. So it's easier if you, you use a variable as normal. So, uh, what's happening here is Grub is going to be mounting this ISO file. And then within that ISO file, it's going to find the Linux kernel. That's why that says Linux there. And in Debian, it's, well, here it's going to be on a loopback device. It's going to be on this device uh, in a folder called Live. And it's called VMLINUZ1. Uh, there's another kernel on this distribution, which has the same thing but two at the end, uh, because there's more than one boot option in there and one's the installer. This is for the live distribution. Um, I've done tutorials before on um, uh, booting stuff like this and um, I'm drawing a blank. I always thought say syslinux or syslin or something like that is what uh, a different bootloader you can use. And when you get the ISO, it has a config file in there I've shown in previous videos. So you get this information from there. But let's go over this. Uh, so we're loading up the Linux kernel with some uh, boot options that live and configure. I got that out of the, uh, off the live CD there. And we're saying from ISO, and we're saying that the ISO file again here is under dev, and it's on the second hard drive, SDB, and the first partition, and the ISO file. And then we're loading up the initial RAM disk from that same drive under that folder live, and that's initram1.img in the case of Debian. Of course, you have to look at what's on the ISO to figure out what's to put in the grub config file. So what's happening here is grub boots, and grub is what mounts your ISO file. Once it's mounted, it's mounted like any other drive, and you just have to point the bootloader to the proper kernel and uh, give it the proper parameters that you want and the initial RAM disk. Now, this was my first solution looking at stuff online, and I'm not that great with, uh, with Grub. I mean, it looks so simple, but you do one thing wrong and it won't boot properly. Um, but this is from ISO here, and I'm pointing it directly to the ISO on a particular hard drive. This will cause problems if you have multiple hard drives, sorry for the blurriness there, um, if you have multiple hard drives, multiple USB drives, and maybe this USB drive won't be SDB, and maybe you have more than one partition, so it won't be SDB1. So that's why I didn't like that, so I spent a little time and looked around, and there, in newer versions of Grub, there is another option, I'm gonna hit escape here, I'm gonna go down to the second option, and hit E to edit that, and it's almost identical, except for instead of saying from ISO, I say find ISO and just pass it the ISO variable that we set up here. So this should work regardless of what hard drives you have in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot this option by hitting either F10 or Control X. I'll hit Control X. And it's booting from the command list. And it's loading up just like any other distribution of Linux. Of course, it's running as a live CD. Uh, so as far as it's concerned, it's it's a live CD running off a USB drive. It's a ISO file. The ISO file is mounted. Again, it loads the kernel to RAM, the initial RAM disk, and then the initial RAM disk will find your, the um, file system. In this case, it's a, uh, a squash file system. It's squash, right? Or squish. I think it's squash. A squash file system, which is very common among live CDs. And any second here. Also, this is the, um, what did I get? The LXDE? Yeah, the, the LXDE desktop version of it, but this should be the same config for Grub 
uh, no matter what desktop version you download of Debian. And there you go. We got Debian running off the USB drive as an ISO file. Uh, benefits of this, uh, as opposed to doing other way, like using UNet Bootin, is it's not as cluttered. You get an ISO file, and you can put multiple ISO files in there, and you have to configure the Grub file properly, and it's different for each distro. So using the Grub file for this is not going to work on uh, Deb or, uh, Ubuntu. For one example is that the Debian Live puts its kernel and its um, RAM disk in a folder called Live, where Ubuntu uses a folder called Casper. I believe that uh, Linux Mint uh, uses a folder called Casper as well. So you'd be pointing to the wrong place. Uh, plus, they, their kernels and their initial RAM disk have slightly different names. Uh, but as you can see, you can boot Debian off an ISO file. I've given more in detailed instructions. If you just search through my videos for um, multi-boot, there's a few different videos where I do different ways of multi-booting USB drives. So thanks for watching. Again, sorry for the quality. This was just... Um, I wanted to show this running on a real machine, on a virtual machine, just to show that it does work. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, I hope you have a great day, and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a Check out the links in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to the grub file that I created for this USB drive, so you can copy and paste it, and it will hopefully work, unless years from now they change the setup on that live CD. Thanks for watching.